Welcome. What I want to do is show you how to find the period of the tangent and cotangent function. So we're just going to look at the, the formulas for the tangent and cotangent function, how to find it, and really why is it different than when we're dealing with sine and cosine. And then that's just going to help us when we look into graphing it, which you can see in other videos. You know, The first thing we always look at to, is to how to find the period. So before I get into the formulas, let's just take a look at the unit circle real quick. And I'm not going to go too much into detail, but let's look at our first point here. If I had this first point in the first quadrant, that is radical 3 over 2, comma, uh, 1 half. And that's your x and y coordinate, right? So when we look at the tangent of this problem, so the tangent of this angle, which is pi over 6. So when I look at the tangent of pi over 6, that's going to be my y over my x, all right? And therefore, you know, when simplifying this, I get 1 over radical 3, rationalize the denominator. I get square root of 3 divided by 3. That means the tangent of pi over 6 equals square root of 3 over 3. Now, when dealing with sine and cosine, it took us to go all the way around the circle before we started repeating values for sine and cosine. So that's why the period was 2 pi. And you can notice that when looking at the graph, it had to go a distance of 2 pi before the graph started repeating again. So we look at tan of pi over 6, which is square root of 3 over, um, square root of 3, over 3. And what I want you to notice is if we, look at, um, if we look at 7 pi over 6, at tangent of 7 pi over 6, what we get now is this point is at negative square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. Well, therefore, when you write this out, negative square root of 3 over 2, you notice that the negative signs are going to cancel out. Therefore, when simplifying this, we're going to get the exact same answer. So therefore, all, instead of going all the way around the circle to repeat itself, the tangent function now repeats itself after pi. So when looking at the period of tangent and cotangent, the period is just going to be pi. And that's just for the parent graph of the tangent cotangent function. Because remember, cotangent is going to be x over y. So it's going to be the same, you know, it's going to be a different ratio, but using the same points, um, you know, it's just going to uh, it's just going to be the square root of three. And then if you did the negative divided by the negative, you'd still get a positive square root of three. So the cotangent also repeats itself at pi. Now let's go and take a look at the let's go and take a look at the formula and kind of see how would our period maybe change or be affected? So if I was going to take a look at my general formula, I could have you know, y equals d plus a tangent of bx minus c, and y equals d plus a cotangent of bx minus c. Now, if you remember, when we were finding the period for the sine and cosine, we always did the period was 2 pi divided by b where b was your coefficient of your x value. And that affected the period if it was stretch or, con um, stretch or condensed. That's going to be the exact same thing for tangent and cotangent. So when looking at the period, it's always the parent graph is pi. But if we have any type of transformations, we need to make sure we include them. So it would be pi divided by b. Now in the parent graph, b is 1. So therefore, we know we have a period of, of pi. However, for any transformation where you have a value of b, you got to make sure the period for tangent and cotangent is going to be pi divided by b. There you go. That's my explanation. Hope you enjoy. Thanks.